So I had this great question about working with rational exponents. And it's actually a factoring problem, but I, I don't think the student realized it was a, a factoring problem. So this is a really typical situation that comes up with critical point problems. So it's like a buried review in there. I don't, I don't really know what else to call this. So what I wanna talk about are these two examples. These are really common things that come up in calculus where you're trying to find the critical points and the domain. So let's just, let's just jump right into it. All right, so first things first, you, you've gotta take the derivative of this and to, to find the critical points. And you have options of how to do this, but I'm gonna give you my own personal opinion of, of how to do this. Now, if you watch other YouTube videos, You'll see other ways to do this. So, I mean, if, if you don't like this explanation and you, you prefer another one, that, that's, that's totally fine. You do you. But um, I like to think of this actually in, in two forms. So you've got this form here. And then the other way that you could think about this is you could actually just distribute this, this x to the four fifths into the parentheses like this, okay? And the reason that I like this is that it just makes taking the derivative a little bit easier for finding the critical points. So, okay, I, I go ahead and I find the derivative and everything is hunky-dory. So let's see, this is gonna give me what, 12 over five and then x to the negative one-fifth. Okay, so here's here's kind of the situation that I, I'm talking about here. And if you watch couple different YouTube videos on this. Like I said, you, you will see other ways to kind of approach this. My personal preference is to treat this as a factoring issue. Okay, so here's what I mean. Notice that we've got this denominator of five. So I can factor out, I can factor out one fifth from this, no problem. So I'm going to write that one fifth and that will get rid of the fractions because we just dislike dealing with those if we don't have to. And then the other thing to notice about this is that these exponents, they're, they're just kind of hard to look at. So the, the trick that kind of comes up here is what if you factor out kind of this negative one? So what if I factor out X to the negative one fifth? All right, so how does that factor? I would actually challenge you to pause the video here and just see if you can figure out how this factors before I tell you. Okay, so this is gonna factor as nine X plus 12. Did you get that or is that not what you thought? So I think this particular example actually plays a trick on people's heads. So remember, if you were to distribute this, if you were to distribute this back in, so you multiply these numbers together, right? The one fifth times the nine, the one fifth times the 12. But as far as the exponents go, you add the exponents. So that somehow messes with people's heads all the time. So because of that, if I take one minus one fifth, I will get to four fifths. So that's how this factors. And so the reason that I like this is then once I get this, I can basically like instantly tell you this does not exist at x equals zero. And this is zero at x equals negative 12 over nine. So we've got that and then just a quick discussion on the domain here so for the domain all right so really the only thing you have to worry about with these types of problems are thinking about really the denominator right here so if the denominator in this like rational exponent if this is odd then you don't have any problem points um so your domain will just be all real numbers so the domain in this case goes from negative infinity to positive infinity Okay, now this is actually an excellent segue into this other problem. So I wanna talk about the domain of this other problem before we talk about the derivative. So the domain in this case, now we've got a problem because this really stands for a fourth root and when you have even roots, then you have issues with the domain. So when you have even roots, you cannot have, um, this cannot be negative, really, this value cannot be negative. So in this case, the domain here would actually start at zero zero and then go to infinity. So that's kind of one difference that you want to think through. And then if we go ahead and, and do this one more time, so I'm going to go ahead and distribute. So this will be seven over four minus X to the three 
fourths, so I can go ahead and take my derivative. So 7 over 4x to the 3 fourths minus 3 over 4x to the negative 1 fourth. So I think sometimes people just don't want to like lean into this particular factoring trick. And once you get it, it, it goes very quickly in, in my opinion. So you just have to practice it a little bit. So if we do this one more time, so notice in this case, the fractional value that I'm going to factor out is one fourth. And then I'm going to factor out X to the negative one fourth, which will leave me with seven X just minus, uh, minus three, sorry, minus three. And so that's how that would work. And so then you have once again, so it does not exist at x equals zero, which, okay, fine. I mean, that wasn't in the domain. And then um, you have, this is zero at x equals three over uh, seven, three over seven. And so then you can kind of just go forward with this with whatever else you need. But these are really common questions that I, I get. So I just wanted to make sure you've, you've kind of seen this factoring trick. And like I said, if you practice it a little bit, um, you will get a lot faster with it and you will notice that this happens a lot in um, usually like critical point type problems. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.